Now entering Nerdist.com. Oi, this is Nigel McGuinness, and you are listening to the very best of the Wrestling Compadres Slamcast. Happy New Year. Grab a bird and kiss her. Mwah. Wrestling buddies want to be your buddies. Hey, buddy. Buddy. And the happiest of happy new years to you and your family and your friends and everyone in your life. What's up? This is the Wrestling and Padre Slamcast. You're either listening to this or... On New Year's Eve, then again, a lot of our listeners, Dale, are in other parts of the world, and it might already be New Year's. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Merry New Year! <laughs> <laughs> One of the best movies of all time. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, hey, here we go. Let's do this. Uh, this is going to be a fun show. We decided to put together our best of episode, Dale. Yes, indeed. Uh, we should probably introduce ourselves first. Hey. Hey. Okay, Great. moving on. Uh, <laughs> Uh, at Jay Quasto on the Twitter, and this man next to me, find him on Twitter, at the Walking Dale. He is always vest for business. He is none other than Dale Rutledge. I got a puppy. I got a puppy? Bad news. Bad news. That's right. The good news is we in here. We in here, and it's early. <laughs> It's, I, we're doing this on a, on a morning. I did it in a morning. I had banana pudding <laughs> what? for breakfast. How you doing that? It's my birthday week. Oh, that's right. Well, that's, I mean, it, uh, it, is, what technically? Technically, all right. Let's pull the cat out of the bag. This is—we're not filming this on New Year's Eve, guys. <laughs> we got shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, actually two weeks before New Year's, but you know what? It's a best of episode, so it's all recaps. Um, some of our favorite people decided to film little audio segments telling us what their favorite episodes were, and so we took snippets from all of their favorite episodes and put them into one. That way, if you're relatively new to the show, you're going to find out in the next hour just how badass. This show really is. Yeah, you are. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Snippets. Yeah, snippets. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so right now, if you're listening to this, uh, we're all home for the holidays, or maybe you're back in L. I know I'll be back east for the new year. Oh, yeah? Yeah, man. I'll be in Vegas. Okay. You know, partying it up. Not a bad place to spend New Year's. No, it's not. I'm mm-hmm. seeing Lady Gaga and Tony Bennett together. Hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's into it. Uh, by the way, Chuck Rice is on his way. He's busy right now. Uh, so as soon as he does come in, we're gonna give him a nice little intro. Yeah, we will. Um, but I don't. You know, why don't we just get started? You know, I'm. We're both very, very grateful. Uh, let's let's do a let's let's get real here. Oh, okay. <clears throat> it's been a hell of a year. Oh man, yeah. You know, when we started this show, uh, what was it right before the Royal Rumble? Yeah, it was like uh, end of January, like maybe the twenty second or around around there. Yeah, so, when we yeah. started this show, who knew? You know, all, our goal was to just make a really good show, put a lot of work in, and give people the best uh, ear entertainment they could possibly have. Yeah. And I think we we knew we were going to do that. Were we going to get an audience? That we didn't know. I mean, this is there's been leaps and bounds beyond what I think we were anticipating, and yeah, uh, it's it's been great to be here at Nerdist, and it's been awesome to to have all these. I mean, as you're going to hear, all these crazy, awesome Just guests. Never would have thought we'd have this many cool oh, people man. on the show. So uh, it's, it's been living out a dream. I mean, we, we did After Buzz together before this show, but it, it, it's, you know, it's a different kind of format. Yeah. And this just really allows us to be us. This and, is and our, our total creative freedom here. Yeah, and I love it. I mean, it's just, I don't know, I'm, I'm very, very thankful for it. And when you look at all the fun moments we've had, I mean, WrestleMania, we were there for, what, four days? Uh-huh. We got re- well. You got recognized. I didn't get recognized. Uh, <laughs> you need a gimmick, Johnny. Oh, speaking of which, no, I'm going to save that for another time. I'll tell you. Okay. Uh, but no, WrestleMania. I mean, we got to meet a lot of the listeners there. Uh, SummerSlam. We had a great experience there. Oh yeah. Um, going backstage on Raw. Like we were, we're so very fortunate. And then, not to mention, you know, we got to bring our friends on the show. Yeah, that's been pretty nice as well. We're really just hanging out in here. Trying to make it professional. Yeah, we're hanging out, <laughs> trying to make it professional, trying to have different sides of the coin for every topic. That way, almost every listener is covered. And and you know, we we love to uh, we love to give props when they're due. But you know, we're not afraid to give a little criticism when it's needed. Yeah, but we're here. You know what I'm saying. I wish you died in the womb. 
<laughs> what are you implying? Uh, nothing. Uh, I, that's the thing about it, man. I, we, we're just huge fanboys, and we have a lot of respect for the business. So it's, it's, I, will, I will say that this is a different podcast than most other podcasts that are out there. Oh, I, I would agree. Um, and we do listen to many other podcasts, but we just wanted to make ours as different as possible. And, uh, and it's really cool because, like, we didn't know. I mean, obviously, we were excited to have Booker on board, but we had no idea what kind of audience we would get. And, like, we've developed such a really strong audience, and I couldn't be more grateful to, for the fact that, like, you know, if people – like I said, people recognize you at WrestleMania. Or, like, I've had people come out to comedy shows from the podcast. Yeah. I mean, it's just like it's – you know, that's, that's the goal is when you make a connection with someone and they, they feel like – you know, they they feel like your buddy when when they're listening to us. And you know, sh- speaking of which, shout out to James Kennedy and Connor Devlin. They started a, a damn website, Ruffigans dot com, and they've done a phenomenal job. Yeah, they have. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been so trippy, and this is only year one. We ain't even hit our first birthday yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very true. Uh, so yeah, as soon as Chuck gets here, we'll give him a grand intro, and uh, and he won't know anything about this intro. Uh, <laughs> that's perfectly fine. Let's get right into it, guys. Uh, speaking of WrestleMania. We had a hell of a time, and we did the red carpet. Um, Dale and I have made no bones about it. We hate doing red carpets. Oh, boy. They're miserable. Uh, you feel like a hamster, in a way? I don't know. Just a, something. A, a, a pack rat? Grimy. And, yeah. It's looking just for awful. a crumb. Yeah, neither one of us are pushy, so we're not the kind of people that are going to like shove dudes out of the way. Yeah. You know? Those Marvel guys were getting pretty competitive. You know, right Marvel there, can kiss my ass. That's <laughs> That shit... Just don't get aggressive with me. I will knock you out. That's mm. I was n- I was not happy on that red carpet. Yeah, but you and I were lucky enough to get a couple of fun interviews. Oh yeah, we got a bunch really, but well, uh, these these ones stand out. I feel T- you and Titus cracked my shit up. No, you and Triple H was, was uh, that's what made me laugh because <laughs> you had the balls to say vest for business, and he was like, "Yeah, bro, that was that's a great idea." <laughs> <laughs> he went on for a bit about it. We'll play that here in a sec. And uh, but yeah, you and Titus, I felt like you guys were going to get drinks afterwards. Oh man, you know, primetime players, baby. <laughs> <laughs> play it a player. Play it a player. All right, enjoy our interviews with Titus O'Neil. Actually, no, Triple H first, and then Titus O'Neil. We'll be right back. Um, the uh, best for business has really caught on as a hashtag and just as a, a great gimmick overall. Did you think I'm I'm best for business personally? Yeah. Um, did Did you think that it was? <laughs> Yeah. No. Listen, listen. No. I work with what I got, okay? Yeah. Uh, did you think that it would catch on like that? I mean, it, it's pretty amazing. Well, we were going to go with vest for business, but I was going to start wearing vests, and then but we then were going to... Stone Cold got mad because yeah, the no, vests are really... He did, yeah. He said that's like my gimmick, and then we switched, and then well, what could we do that was similar to that? We already had the shirts made, so we just put a big B over the V. It and worked it out. It, with v, v, yeah, and it worked so out it great. Worked, so you know. we were able to salvage the merch and still uh, carry on. Cost efficient and catch on. Great job. Great job. You got to make lemons, uh, lemonade sometimes out of the lemons that life gives you, you know. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. Thanks a lot. This is great to talk to you. <laughs> Here with Titus O'Neill now. Play it a player. How good is it? You're a player? Well, I mean, I mean you fly, you dress nice. I, I don't crush that much. Is this Taylor? It's Men's Warehouse? No, that ain't a player. See, if it don't have a label inside that says Taylor, especially for, you might want to. But I like the way I look. You do look good. You do look good. But smell good. Smell good. Nature. Nature. We're cutting that promo. All yeah, over. all over again. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So, uh, how good does it know you're here, and this is WrestleMania, and you're taking off right now? What's happening the rest of the year? Uh, I, I'm, I don't know what all is going to happen the rest of the year. I just know that I, I prepare every day. Uh, to make each day the best that I possibly can. And I know for whatever success is to come, I've earned it. And uh, that's what I'm looking to do. I'm I'm looking to be a champion here in this company. That's what I came here to do. Uh, Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do it with the primetime players, but I had a lot of growing pains and growing uh, gains in uh, being, being tagged up with Darren. He's a great competitor. He's a great guy. He's still one of my best friends, but it's time for... Titus O'Neil and, and the rest of the WWE Universe to witness the rise of the Titus O'Neil. The thing what we need is a Titus hashtag to take off. We're going to work on that. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll get it going. We'll get a whole lot of hashtags going. I mean, they had a great after party after that red carpet as well. They were yeah. doing like a bunch of auctioning for charity, which was great. And uh, Brido was there, our buddy from the show. Yeah, old um, Brido. There with his girlfriend. And uh, then the most random thing happened. Uh, we hopped into the, the guy who runs WWE Studios. Michael uh, Luisi. Michael Luisi. He uh, cool offered guy. us a limo ride back to our hotel. <laughs> Brother. <laughs> that was super weird. Yeah. 
but uh, pretty cool experience. I don't think I've ever done that before. And I'm so glad we were sober to enjoy it. Yeah. I made sure I didn't get sauced. I was like, I had like one and a half drinks. I was I was sauced at WrestleMania, I think, but not not well, at sure. this party. I mean, yeah. hey, what are you doing? It's 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 WrestleMania thirty. Yeah, what, are you gonna not have a cocktail <laughs> in Louisiana? I mean, come on, come on, ma, come on, ma. <laughs> but yeah, we had a great time at the party. Uh, Gabriel Iglesias, we were hanging out with him. He was talking smack to Marlon Wayans. Oh, that's right. Uh, that was ridiculous. Um, but yeah, that was a fun limousine. That was weird. Yeah, very unexpected. Weird. Very yeah. uh. Yeah. Just one of those things, like, hey, if a limo pulls up and they offer you a ride, you, you say yes. Thing, yeah. You know what else is unexpected? Hmm. Us getting an interview with Great Khali. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. I don't even think he expected that. No, um, arguably this is my, uh, this is probably my favorite interview we've done this year. Dale, um, what did it, how did it feel to you to, to interview the Great Khali? Oh, man, it was... Uh... An experience. Hello. Oh, is he still on hold? Oh my God, he's been on hold for weeks. <laughs> Gosh, he's he's just sleeping on the phone. I tell you, he ain't got else to do. I guess. With that said, guys, uh, it, it, <laughs> like I said, we like to have fun on the show. Um, after Greg Kelly got released, we decided to do an interview with him, and uh, yeah, we think you'll dig it. But yeah. we're very fortunate, as far as we know, he has not granted any interviews to any other show. We're lucky enough to have Great Kali on the line right now. Um, at least I think he's on the line. Uh, Mr. Ka- great, Mr. Great, Kali, are are you there? Oh, you got it. What? Okay. Hello. Oh, right. there he is. No, there, there he is. is. Yeah. yeah. No, we I got think you. He's with us. I think we got him. All right. Well, how are you? Um, you know, how are you adjusting to uh, you know, civilian life, man? It's, is it going well? What? Uh, I don't think he heard. Uh, basically, what what is it like being future endeavored? What? Mm. Uh, I, don't well, I think knows, maybe there's a I don't weird think he knows future endeavor. That's a big. Oh, that does is he big... understand what that means? Why? Hello? Uh, okay, uh, to <laughs> rephrase it, Dale. Why you quit now? <laughs> I've just been upset. Okay. Oh, See yeah, now you okay. made him. You made sorry. him sad. I'm, I'm really sorry, Dale. I'm really sorry. Be let's, a little more sensitive. Okay, let's, you... let's change the subject then. Um, okay, Kali, who was your favorite wrestler to work with in the ring? Great Kali. Great Kali. Oh, your, your oh, he... favorite person to work with was yourself? Wait, I, do you understand the question? What? Mm, okay, so this is this is more difficult yeah, than it, I thought it would be. It, yeah, um, I think we would have had an let's... easier time interviewing Grumpy Cat. Okay, let's rephrase it. Uh, now, now, Kali, we know you're a great dancer. Um, obviously, you learned a lot about dancing in, during your time in WWE. Any any comments on that? What? I like to tell you. You say he's a... Tango, tango, no show this sports. I'm very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a really good point. Okay. Uh, I think there's something about Fandango in there. Yeah. Well, Fandango, another He's dancing a dancer, so, so I think... We must be friends. They probably exactly teach each other dance up. moves. What's that name? <laughs> Great. Um, oh, I don't know what that is exactly. Um, Kali, who would you say should take over your reign of the Kali Kiss Cam? Last week, I just said, he said, you know, uh, pronounce press, uh, perfect name. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. I don't know. Did he Did he say Abdul the Butcher? I don't know what he said. I think he said Iron Sheik, man. Oh, it could have been. Great Kali. Great Kali. Oh, he still wants to do the kiss oh, cam, guys. He still wants it. Well, you know what? You should. That was a really good role for you. You didn't have to talk that much. <laughs> uh, you didn't have to wrestle. Right. It was kind of playing to your strengths. I got it. He got it. That's right. his role. Well, that's great. Well, um, this has been exhilarating. Yeah, Kali, yeah. thank you for your your time. We really appreciate. Hello. All right, oh, no, yeah. we know you're no, still there. We're still here too. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Dale, do you want to say anything in closing to Kali? Because I don't know when we'll be able to talk to him again. This is very special. Wow, uh, we've all enjoyed uh, our time with you today. I've just been upset. Why do you keep upsetting him, Dale? I, well, I, I said I had a good time. Be a little more Dale, sensitive. why are you so mean to the great Kali? We wish you luck in whatever you would possibly do after this. It's certainly got to be better. <laughs> Get out of here. You don't want to fight, you fight. You know what, <laughs> Kali, I apologize for Dale, uh, but thank you for your time. And, and you know what, we'll, uh, we'll see you, you know, down the, the road somewhere. What? Nothing. Bye, buddy. Well... Guys, I mean, you know. I forgot to ask him creamy peanut butter or crunchy peanut butter. Can we call him back? Sure. No. (laughs) Kali. (laughs) Creamy peanut butter or crunchy peanut butter. What? Okay. 
You know what? Um, bad we'll just... connection. Bad connection. Can't hear you, man. <laughs> yeah, well, wrong number. Get out of here. You don't want to fight. You fight. <laughs> okay. We don't want to fight. We don't want to fight. That's for sure. Yeah. So. Thanks, All right. Kelly. Well, that was um. That was something, guys. That was special. I, I think that might have been better than our Stevie Ray interview. May, yeah, <laughs> that, may have, that may have to go on our best of uh, on New Year's Eve. <laughs> uh, after we did that quote-unquote interview, uh, I yeah. did get some footage sent to me of the great Kali from when he was younger. Are you uh, serious? Yeah. And, what are you uh, talking about? He actually used to be able to move a lot better than really most of his w was <laughs> yeah i'm giving you a compliment that's what i'm saying I was yeah well you know what you're ruining it now Kali. are you serious though yeah what? i'll I'll, sh- I'll send you the video but it's really a compilation of like is it him wrestling it's him wrestling wait how long has he been wrestling i mean a, a while according to this video get out of here but yeah he had some pretty good moves i was you know i still not a huge fan of right. his wwe run is okay. what i'll say right right but uh it was it was it was surprising. Well, the thing is, does anyone know how old he is? I don't know. what. How, I have no idea. I don't know. I can't tell by looking at him. I, I literally have no idea. I'll He's tell you 100. what, though. The guy, whatever you want to say about his ring skills, he gets it. Oh, he, yeah. He understands he's funny. Yes. And he seems like a genuinely nice guy. I, I, there's only but so much you can do with a guy that can't really speak English, I guess. Right, but he tried his damnedest. Those little segments with Natty when he kept trying to talk and mm-hmm. her trying not to crack up. Oh my gosh! Was that back when she was like had the farting gimmick? And that was after. Oh, okay. When they were they were kind of a couple. I don't right, really right, 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 right. Anyways, let's not really worry about that. <laughs> uh, on to well, the first of our many uh, many buddies, compadres, listeners. Uh, this guy has been down with us since the AfterBuzz days, and that's our friend Nick the Compadre from Jolly Old Englanddale. <laughs> oh boy! Yep. Actually, technically, him. Yeah, he's in. Yeah, he's in London. I think Stewie's Wales. Yes. He's England. He's Correct. London. Correct. Perfect. Well, um, he had a favorite episode, so uh, take it away, Nick. Hey, compadres. This is Nick at the Nick Glancy on Twitter. The guys have done so many great interviews the past year, and it's really hard to narrow it down to one. But for me, personally, is the one with Stardust. It was a great interview, really funny. The conversations that were going on about planets and his age and uh, him holding the keychain. During the whole interview, which he got before Johnny and Dale interviewed him, was really funny. And um, those bits, and I, we didn't really hear much when uh, Gold Dust was in the background telling him off a little bit as well. That was really funny. But um, they've done so many great interviews, but for me, that was my favorite. And I just want to wish you guys a, a very happy new year. Did you know, and and you might know this, that Venus has no seasons? I was unaware of that personally. Un- unbelievable to, to think that. They have no seasons. Yeah. And yet they're the nearest planet to us. That's terrifying, isn't and, it? And yet here I am slaving over this chalkboard, trying to find a way, thinking too linear, not realizing that it's not time and it's not space. It's everything. It's a cosmic clock. Hmm. What's north is south. What's south is north. Venus has no seasons. That what? would explain why their tourism is so low. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I feel it, I, I, that's dead on. <laughs> that's, that would be the reason. That's their problem. That's what I call them. That's dead their on drama. Dale. Everything he says. Is he dead, dead on. on Dale? He's dead on Dale. <laughs> D-O-D. <laughs> D-O-D. D-O-D, everybody, is dead on Dale. <laughs> I got a new segment. So that's coming up now. <laughs> dead on Dale, Goldie. <laughs> How is Goldie not in full makeup? Goldie lives the life of shapeshifter. Okay. I see. Okay. Do you ever this watch Deep iteration. Space Nine? Oh, of course. I'm on Nerdist. You think I didn't watch Deep I, Space I, Nine? I, I honestly <laughs> shouldn't have asked. But Goldie, he, he, he walks this half and half line because his career has gone such a distance. Right. For me, I'm shocked that at his age... He's able to continue. The people of Earth have a movie. I believe it's called Benjamin Button. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gold Dust. Good Earth movie. He is the Brad Pitt in real life. Gold Dust keeps getting younger. Honestly, I've gone back and watched some old footage, and he, he looks to be the best shape in his life. In his entire Earth career. That means you're probably going to be able to do this until you're maybe 63. But that's, that's age... Which that's, is relative. That's time. I, we but 63 is, if we're just 
dead on Dale. We're just talking. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. But Star- if anyone could do it. What, if Stardust tomorrow walks out and finds the cosmic heat, what is Stardust doing here? That's a good point. Or will Stardust spend all this time until he's 63? No. I'm not, I'm concerned. What I'm I would stressing do stressing over the. Th- <laughs> I mean, I'm a huge not to not to quote Spaceballs, but I would actually find a flying uh, Winnebago, and I, if you, you get the cosmic key, I would literally travel throughout space and a mog. Yeah, and find a talking dog and just uh, make man, sure everything dog. is fine. Yeah, Winnebago is actually the only way to travel in space. Mm-hmm. I, I've done it several ways, and that's that's probably the the most comfortable, at least. Absolutely, I would say. you don't have to worry about finding any place to stay. I don't. As the kids would say, want to burst the proverbial bubble, especially for you, Dod, because Be I, you know what? I, I won't. Spaceballs is real. Mm-hmm. It's real. Everything about it is real. Yeah, that 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 just needed to be said. That's like all. The, the, the comedy Santa Claus. It's still it, it exists. Oh yeah, it exists. Yeah. Perfect answer. I've listened to that interview a few times now. I still don't know what we were talking about. I feel like he's got that Men in Black mind eraser in front of us. Maybe that's what happened. It might be. I don't remember a lot of SummerSlam. <sighs> yeah. There was something about a meme. That's all I know. Yeah, well, that's because you got famous off it. <laughs> you know, when you when you get famous, your memory goes. Yeah. That's what happens, because you're counting that paper. Are, are you upset that you were writing <laughs> right next to the meme? That's the best part about it. I literally was two millimeters from you. They had to cut you out. They basically. cut me out. I got edited. I was your stunt double, and they edited me out. I was a stunt meme. It was a very tight frame. They Just only had but so much room. One more example of why my face sucks. I don't know. <laughs> I've been saying that for so long. Uh, yeah, well, I now admit it. <laughs> Damn it. Man, the Stardust was quite a boon, though. That was God. that was the best. He was, oh, man. When him when he was talking about we were doing Spaceballs references back and forth, I almost lost it. And his brother just kept shooting it like stank eye yeah. over at us, like, don't you talk to me. Yeah, Goldie, Goldie was grumpy cat. He was not yeah, having he it. Was. So oh, fun. Man. Uh, but, yeah, great choice, Nick, without a doubt. Now we go from England to Ireland. Talk about an international fan base we got. I love it. Yeah. And this is one half of the creators of RuffAgains.com, none other than Connor Devlin. And, uh, you know, I think you're going to enjoy his choice, so check it out. Hey, guys. Connor Devlin here from Ireland. Just want to say thanks to Johnny, Dale, Chuck, and Booker T for putting on a great podcast every week and having a fantastic year. There's been great appearances and guests on the show. But I've got to say, my favorite episode has got to be the one with the Iron Sheik. It had me in stitches laughing the whole episode, even though I couldn't understand him 100%, but I got the gif anyway. But anyway, thanks again, lads, for a great year and listening to your podcast. Follow me on Twitter at ConnorDev666 and check out Rufkins.com for all news. The night you won the WWF Championship, it was the night after Christmas, 1983. Did your whole career just flash before your eyes when you won that title, just for how far you've come? That was the biggest pe- prestige pleasure for me. So I come from all this country in the world, Tehran, Iran, to America, Madison Square Garden, to be, get that gold, nothing over gold. I get it, I pay for my due. That was a great feeling to so come Madison Square Garden champion. What year was it? 1983. 1983. Yes, it was. Thanks to God, it helped me, and I made it. You and Bob Backlund that night. Exactly. What are your thoughts on Bob Backlund? Bob Backlund, great wrestling background from Minnesota. Mm -hmm. He grew up with a wrestling, tough man, intelligent man, and excellent shooter, excellent shape. He he was... uh, one of the best, like Bruno Sammartino, different way, but Backland, different way. Both of them was great. Who was the strongest guy you've ever been in the ring with? Was it Bruno? Well, uh, strong guy, probably you're right, was a Bruno. And then for some in Hollywood, Hulk Hogan. Mm. And then for the be a freak or a, a, a jabroni under a giant. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't respect that freak, and and he's supposed to be giant. Uh, I don't have respect for him because anywhere we go around the world, Japan, 
Germany, and he, a lot of young kids come ask him for autograph. He tell the kids, no, get the fuck out of here. So on that day, I, I, to me, he was in a joy, and he was just like really most. He didn't respect the wrestling friends. The people make him uh, good guy or bad guy. You, you cover it, though. Can you cover yeah. it? We, he didn't wanna... respect Andre because Andre never gave the fans the love that they... Gave him. They gave him. Exactly. And, that was my point. And the Sheik was a huge heel at the time, so, you know, he was giving time to, to fans, even though they didn't like him, and he said, well, how can this guy who's loved by all and is, you know, the highest paid wrestler in the, in the, in the, in the you know, the locker room, why is he treating everyone like shit? Right. Sheik, you know, is, is a man with a heart of gold, so he doesn't want to... Uh, represent that in any way so he never liked andre and of course the voice you're hearing right now one half of the megan boys this is Paige megan so welcome to the show as well thank you so much guys thanks for having us absolutely now oh, go ahead now i want to know how come you don't respect hulk hogan then no i respect hulk hogan because hulk hogan paid for his due and he was a lot of hard work in the gym he was uh had a charisma and um uh, he, he was one of a million uh, in the in the world. He can beat the Iron Sheik. We will have a champion. I have a lot of respect for that man. Mm. And uh, uh, I can I can't say anything bad. He have a problem with his wife or <laughs> and a different very different situation. But Hulk Hogan for wrestling, he was uh, there for that days. Excellent big man, believable, and. Uh, Show business, charisma, but the people know who makes the Hulk Hogan to be Hokumania or and shit. So, would you Absolutely. go have a beer with him? For wh- why not? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's true. That's true, though. Without without the Iron Sheik, Hulkamania wouldn't have really been the way it was. Um, Johnny, you said it perfect. That you're running my agent, supposed to say, but you you covered me. <laughs> Talk about interviews that I didn't understand. Well, yeah, but, but also talk about interviews that we never thought we'd do in studio. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Can't even imagine. Like, you, the, the, half of these things that we've done, I mean, I, I, there's so many people that we didn't mention. Mick Foley being in here. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. just so many amazing moments. Austin Aries came in here several times. Like, there's oh, yeah. just, man, I just can't believe this has all been under one year's time. But, uh, yeah, Iron Sheik is especially. I mean, that's a legend among legends. And we didn't know what we were going to get with him. We didn't know if we would be, like, Angry Sheik. Right. Or, you know, but he was he was very retrospective, amazing Sheik. And the, the compliments he paid us afterwards, oh, my God. He gave us hugs. It was great. It was a good day for Sheik. He, he was. The guy's a true patriot. And also, his documentary is out now, guys. Um, and I can tell you firsthand – it's incredible. Um, it took a long time to make, so find it on iTunes because you'll really, really enjoy it. And uh, the guy deserves it. He's had a hell of a life. And uh, what an amazing story. So, Connor, way to go on that one. Moving on to our friend Carlin Bathdale. We love us some Carlin. Oh, man. I, I'd now. love to have her in here every week if we could. She's adorable. Can we pay her equivalent to her L.A. Kings job? Uh, considering we get no money, I don't know what we can uh, do. All right. Well, um, does she like? We can pay her in McDonald's, man. No, 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 no. Uh, I think she might go for it. <laughs> Actually, she probably would. <laughs> we'll get you a fast food bag of your choice. <laughs> Every time she shows up. she. The worst part is there's nothing that annoys me worse than a hot chick who can eat fast food and still be hot. Uh, she is yeah. like the perfect example. Every time she shows up with a different fast food bag, I'm like, what are you doing? Like, son of a... God! <laughs> Meanwhile, I eat one cheeseburger and my ass gets massive... <laughs> I mean, I had banana pudding for breakfast. So I shouldn't be too uh, you, you judgmental. Shut but. up. You're a famous meme. <laughs> Anyways, Carlin, uh, she's got a choice that we absolutely love. So enjoy her and then enjoy her choice. So my favorite interview, I actually was a part of this interview when I was a guest host on the Wrestling Compadres podcast. It was with Teddy Long, and it was such a heartfelt interview. It really felt like. We were listening to an old friend just kind of tell you a story that you hadn't heard before. And you could truly hear his love for wrestling from the tone of his stories that he was telling. It, I'm just, I'm like such a sucker for old fashioned hard work stories. And that's really what his career was all about. So he started from 
putting the ring together and really kind of climb the ladder from there. And I remember there were moments where I literally teared up just hearing him talk about how or what it took for him to get to where he got. And it really makes every wrestling fan's fandom feel validated knowing that people, the people that they are watching care just as much about the product that as we do. So it was incredible. It really moved me and I will never forget that. And obviously just thank you wrestling compadres for giving me friendship and a place to laugh and something to listen to on my Wednesday drives. And speaking of, you know, just awesome things in general, like wrestling compadres. An honorable mention goes out to the great Kali phone call episode because who the heck let that man use the phone? Yeah, oh, you... yeah. Well, you know, I, I enjoyed everything that I did. You know what I mean? Because I wanted to do it and I just wanted to, to the WWE and I wanted them to know you got no problem with me, player. <laughs> you can tell me what you want. Did you you know what I mean? Tell me what you want. I'll get out there and I'll do it. And that's what Vince knew about me. That's how I, I stayed general manager for almost 10 years. Because he knew he had no problem with me. He could trust me. And I could trust him. You know, he wouldn't ask me to do nothing that he wouldn't do. Wow. So I'm just saying, you know, that, that the, the, the heart attack part was one I really love. And, that's, and the, the great part about it. Uh, well, a couple of parts about it. My grandson, uh, which is uh, 11 years old now, he was about two years old then, he was a ring bearer. And <laughs> so he was, supposed, he was supposed to bring the ring out. Well, we're we're standing there, and we're looking for him, and Vince is on the front row. He's sitting there, you know, and you know, Vince, he's got no patience at whatsoever. So he's looking around, and I can, I can hear him. You know, I can just feel him cussing right then. God damn it, you know? <laughs> and so... And so we don't know where he is, and I, then I come to find out that, that my grandson, he wanted to go use the bathroom, <laughs> and nobody would, nobody would take him to the bathroom. So he said if nobody would take him, he wouldn't come. He wouldn't bring the ring down. <laughs> so he's like two years old. So it was just, it was just, it was really funny. So that, 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 you know, that happened. I enjoyed that part about it, and then the other part I enjoyed was my wife sit there and watch the whole wedding. Uh, <laughs> I will say this. Your, your grandson sounds like a future GM to me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, my, my wife was right on the front row during the whole wedding, and that was the first time I think my wife had had a chance to go and, and watch. You know, she saw me on TV a million times, but to watch me, you know, live and watch what I do, and she, she, she had a great time. Wow. Now, I, I just want to know how Vince McMahon reacted the first time you called him player. <laughs> oh, he loves that. I, I, I said to him, he says it to me. You know, every, he never <laughs> called me Teddy. He never called me Teddy. Always a player. You know, every time I see him. And then sometimes I'll say to him, I said, you know, you're the original OG. <laughs> and, he, and he, he'll laugh at that, and he'll walk away. Uh, that's amazing. Let, yeah. l- let me let me holler at you, player. <laughs> yeah, let me holler at you, player. <laughs> now, Teddy, uh, we talked a little bit about how you're coming down to reality of wrestling at the end of the month. Now, over the years on TV, you and Booker have had your run-ins together, whether it was you stripping him of the U.S. title or you giving him a lot of trouble and he was the GM of SmackDown. What can we expect to see, or can we expect to see any of that old rivalry reignited at the end of the month? Well, I, 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 it's hard to say about that. You know, I don't, you know, I don't know whether that will ever happen again or not. Because I think, you know, in my my deal now with the WWE, I don't think that the, the direction that they're going in is my direction. Uh, like I said, I, I had a great time there, no problem. But they I, they seem to want to go for the authority figures. They want that to be uh, Stephanie and, and uh, Triple H. So uh, you know, you know, people have to realize, you know, when there's nothing for you, there's nothing for you. So when the writers, you know, start to tell you, say, well, we don't know, we don't know, and they never have an answer for you, then you got to understand that, you know, you know, it, maybe you're not going to be put written into the storyline. So. I'm just saying that I don't think they're going in my direction. In fact, I know that they're not because, you know, they've already let me know exactly where I stand with them. But like I said, uh, whatever they want to do is fine. I'm just glad, you know, that I survived it. I, I, I made it there. I mean, I can't go no higher than I was. I'm not a wrestler. It's like I was going for the world heavyweight championship or something, the world title. You know, I, I was general manager uh, for SmackDown and Raw at some point. So I, I ran both of the man's shows, so I went as high as I can go. So I, I've accomplished what I wanted to accomplish in professional wrestling. 
Well, Teddy, I mean, such an amazing story. That's how you earn a living. That's how you earn a great life. You've worked your way up. And uh, I-, I could sit here and listen to him tell these stories yeah. all day. Me guys. too. <laughs> now, having you on the show was, was eye-opening, and, and our listeners are really going to dig it. Because I, you know, I know you don't do a lot of these shows, so we, we really can't thank you enough. And Is there anything else we could promote for you uh, personally? Well, yeah, I'd just like to thank you guys, you know, for uh, taking the time out to uh, even, you know, want to talk to me. Uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, and I also want to say this, too. I've had a lot of people, you know, call me and, you know, and want to know <laughs> what am I going to do, uh, how am I doing. I'm doing fine. I want you to pass that along. I'm, I'm real happy. Uh, I've had a chance to, you know, get some time off and to rest because I've been on the road 20 years of my life. I travel. Uh and I can't, and, and, and as you get older, you know, that stress hits you, you know, and I mean, I was just stress. I mean, you, I'm, I come home two days out of the week, I'm right back on the road. Uh, I leave raw, the show's over at, uh, let's say 11 o'clock. We get out of there at 12 o'clock. Everybody else is going home in that town to go to bed. I'm getting in the car to drive 300 miles to, a, to another town. Uh, I go to bed that late, that morning at 5 o'clock. I'm back up at 11 o'clock trying to get into the gym so I can try to work out and get some stress off me so I can have a good day. So, you know, all that takes its toll on you. So I, I had to, you know, I let my weight got a little bit out of control. I picked up a little weight, and I had, to, I had to check myself. So it was good that I came home. I got a chance to get back. You know, I still train every day, but, you know, still I started back to drinking. And that's not good for you. That alcohol will certainly blow you and put a lot of weight on you. So, but at this stress, you know, trying to drink and go to sleep and get rest. So, I, I've got my weight back down. I'm in good shape now. I feel great, and I'm just happy to be, you know, to be at home for a while and enjoy this time off. And uh, when I get ready to get back out there, believe me, I'm going to get back out there. There was something I didn't see it online. Somebody told me that there was some kind of attention going around where people were signing and saying where they wanted me to go or something, but. You know, I don't know anything about that, but you know, I guess whatever happens, whatever happens. Well, I mean, you've earned you've earned the break, and and we couldn't be happier for you. This is great. I, I'm personally looking forward to shaking your hand when I get to travel to Houston for Reality of Wrestling at the end of the month. You're you're a fascinating man, Teddy. Well, thank you very much, man. And uh, you know, I'll do more shaking hand. I'll give you a hug, player. Oh, oh man, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Holla, 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 Mr. Long. Holla, holla back at you, Blair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, and uh, we really hope to talk to you again soon. And, and you know, best wishes, and, and enjoy the time off, and enjoy enjoy life. Enjoy enjoy the freedom, actually. Exactly, man. That's what it is, freedom. I, I, I was just walking around the other day, free at last, free at last. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Thank All you right. so much for coming on. Hey, no problem. Thank you guys for having me, man. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Talk about a real dude. I mm-hmm. mean, he just has a love for the business and and just really, I don't know, that man did everything from, from putting up the rings to running the show. Tag team match. He's done a few of those, too. Yeah, he did. But hold on a minute, player. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got that. Don't worry about it. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> I think we've got a new addition to the room. Yes, we do. We said he was coming. He makes a grand intro uh, whenever he damn well feels like it, and that's all that matters because he's here. Find him on Twitter at CRice17. He's the pride of TCU, the pride of Houston, Texas. He is Chuck Rice. He's a man. It's best of time. You know I couldn't miss the best of episode. Of course not. We're all here now. I mean, it wouldn't be a best of episode without Chuck on it. It's 2015. That would be weird. Mm-hmm. Right? That yeah. wouldn't be best. It just actually. We, what if we just walked out of the studio and let him talk for an hour, and that was the whole rest of the past? Of the <laughs> you got it from here. We'll tag you in. Well, hell yeah. Uh, so yeah, Teddy Long. That was a great interview, wasn't it? Good. It, re- it really was, and and you know he's such a humble guy too. Like yeah. you know, you and me got to meet him down there at Reality of Wrestling earlier this year, and man, he's got a suit. He's got suits. Ooh, days. his suits were he's amazing. Got suits. <laughs> He's giving you a little tip on your suit too, Johnny. If I remember correctly. I mean, I can't, I can't me- mess with Teddy Long. I mean, what am I going to do? I go to a men's warehouse, you know. That's not. I like the way I look, but I don't look cool. That's not very debonair. No, it's not debonair. I mean, we learned from Titus that you have to have your name on put in on the inside. Yeah, well, to make it real. Yeah, well, I was. That's what I. Men's warehouse. What do you want to do? <laughs> One day, Johnny, yeah. 2015, yeah. it's a new you. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be able to look like a fly brother in a suit. <laughs> uh, moving on. Uh, speaking of fly brothers, <laughs> Scott Narver. <laughs> About as far from a brother as you can get. He'll appreciate the segue. His six-foot-seven frame with his Abe Lincoln beard. 
Um, he's been on the show so many times. We hung out at WrestleMania, and uh, he's got a little something to say about his favorite interview, and he was right there for it along with Chuck, so enjoy. Hey, this is Scott Narver, friend of the Wrestling Compadres, guest in here every so often, having a good time, and so excited about this clip show about the best of the year. And one of my favorite moments with these guys, I actually got to be there for this moment, talking to Sting. That's right, the man in black, the man with the face paint, the man this day with just sunglasses on. And going in there and getting to see the excitement of everybody talking with all these guys. But we went right at Sting right away. Chuck hit him with the hard questions right away. I got to be there. It was excitement. And then we all saw Sting months later debuting the WWE. So let's go back and relive that moment with the man called Sting. He is Sting. Sting, how are you, man? I am excelente. Doing really, really good. So, Sting, so many people have been wondering and, like, clamoring for you to come to WWE, and you're finally here. What, what is that feeling like? Well, you know, I keep saying the same thing. It's like um, long overdue, you know. I, uh, I knew it would happen in some capacity at some time. I did not imagine that it would be, you know, this this long. It was way, way long overdue, uh, but it happened, and and I'm glad that it did. I'm glad to be here, and I'm really grateful for the reception from uh, WWE fans, the roster, some of the guys in the back. I mean, you know, this is this has been a great experience so far. Absolutely. Now, you just got done doing the roster reveal panel and you're up there with someone that you've had many run-ins with Hulk Hogan what's it like to be back in the same company with him well it's exciting it's uh it's always a good thing to be uh hooked up with uh, Hulk again or attached to him in 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 some way and 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 definitely you know there's a, a little bit of comfort you know even knowing that Hulk is there and he was happens to be sitting right next to me at this particular panel so he's always been a a sting booster and uh so that's good. How influential was he in bringing you to WWE? Um, yeah, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know if he was. You know, at this point, he, he was influential enough because he, you know, every time I'd sit next to him on a plane or talk to him in a hotel room or whatever, he'd say, <laughs> "Man, come on, you need to come on out." As a matter of fact, he called me earlier this year and said, hey, brother, what's going on? Let's, let's talk. So he, he did have some influence. I mean. Um, so what will your role be inside of the WWE outside of possibly an Undertaker match, as we heard? But yeah. what uh, do you have as an ambassador role or what are you, what are you here to do? You know, I'm, I'm open to that. I'm open to that for sure. I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I can't define anything at this point. I just, I just know what I'd like to do and, and I'm. Uh, excited to see what doors may or may not open and just kind of play it by ear as time goes on here. Everybody talks about your anticipation for potential opponents in the WWE. Uh, do you ever think about the potential excitement for all the guys in the back wanting that chance to wrestle you? That I'm sure back in the day you felt it coming up in the territories and r- wrestling the big names. That Does that excitement transcend back to you with the younger guys? I, you know, I I hope so. <laughs> you know, the more I get to uh, get in the WWE doors here and and kind of mix with uh, some of the boys in the back and then find out what's going on, I, you know, I'd give you a clearer answer. But at this point, you know, some of the younger guys have come up and and shook my hand and said, "Man, you know, I grew up watching you, and you're one of the reasons why I got into wrestling." It's very humbling to hear, and and uh, I'd like to think that they they would all love to have at least been in the ring with me once, you know. Now, Sting, i got to ask you a little bit of a bittersweet question. Right before you came back to WWE, your old partner Warrior did. And, you know, since he's passed, maybe were you guys planning to link up and do some stuff here? And do you have maybe a favorite Warrior memory you can share with us? Yeah, I I was looking forward to uh, reconnecting with him uh, for sure. uh, his new wife and his two daughters. Um, I'm just going to miss them by a few minutes here today. I got to go c- catch a plane, but I wanted to meet them. Wanted to reconnect with with Jim, and uh, um, especially under the WWE banner, you know, and maybe possibly work with him in some capacity. I was looking forward to that. I, I really was. Well, What's the second part of the question. Do you have a favorite memory of him? Oh, favorite memory. Yeah. Uh, oh man. You know, I, I can remember I can remember leaving California right after we finished wrestling camp, and we were driving in in my 1983 T-Bird, 
<laughs> and we were driving uh, east on Interstate 10. We got to New Mexico and hit a ice storm, snowstorm. And we were so stupid. We had no idea what we were doing. Truckers were pulled over on the side of the road. We'd look at the truckers and go, wonder why they're pulling over like that, you know? We ended up stopping to get gas and something to eat. He got he got one of these um, honey bun, you know, pastry things. He couldn't <laughs> wait to do that. He was talking about Waffle House and scattered, covered, and smothered and all kinds of stuff like that. I didn't even know what he was talking about. I'm a California guy. The food of anyway, the road. We get, we get back on the freeway, and uh, we, we start heading out. We're, we're probably 60 miles an hour, and we hit some ice. And we did about three 360s oh and ended up pointing straight oh ahead God. and just kept on moving. So that, that's, there that's you go. That's a good one. A little memory about Jim there. Well, thank you so much for your time, man. We really appreciate thank it. Thank you. <laughs> man, that was such a fun interview to do and so exciting to like one of, you know, we were some of the people that got to do some of Sting's first interviews when he came to WWE. Yeah, that's true. I, I think between Sting and Stone Cold, I'm surprised you made it out of there alive. I'm surprised yeah. I made it out of there with my pants still dry. Hey, Ooh. wait a minute. <laughs> I hope that's a urine reference. Yes, yes it was. Yes, it was. Oh, I didn't. I wasn't. No, Johnny, I, I get wasn't, your mind out of the gutter. I wasn't going to judge either way. It's like, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was very exciting. All right. Not that exciting, okay. but very exciting. Not Let's exciting. be honest. <laughs> uh, moving on. Uh, this guy hails. This is our first American. No, Carlin was. And Scott Narver. Okay. Uh, this guy hails from uh, from my home state of Philadelphia. He's a great kid. He uh, he really wants to get into the podcast game. He wants to get into broadcasting. He listens to everything we do. And uh, I may even see him over the holidays. He might come to my show. I'm not sure. Nice. Actually, this is New Year's, so this has already happened, so forget I said that. Uh, <laughs> his name's Aaron Snyder. Awesome kid. And uh, he knows exactly what his favorite interview was, so check it out. What's up, Dale, Johnny, and Chuck? It's your boy Aaron Snyder here. Uh, my favorite episode is when you guys did the episode with Dean Ambrose. Uh, I really appreciated that episode because Dean Ambrose is one of my favorite wrestlers. I liked how he talked ha- about how he's going to get Seth Rollins in that hell in a cell and destroy him. Um, you guys are awesome. I listen to your podcast every Wednesday. Uh, I hope one day we can meet, and uh, it would just be a pleasure to meet you guys. You guys are awesome, and keep doing your thing, bros. I'm out. Well, from your from your past to your future, Dean, you recently wrapped on your first WWE Studios production uh, titled Lockdown. Uh, how badass of an experience was that? Dude. Dude. It was so much fun. It was like the uh, best, most stress-free, carefree, uh, you know, five or six weeks of shooting, you know, ever. Uh, we're, and I never done a movie, and I never acted before. And I don't, oh, that's crazy! You know, uh, you know, they, they brought it to me. You know, I was asked like, "Hey, uh, uh, you know, I actually thought I was in trouble." You know, I got you know I brought over and uh, they made a bit. I'm like, "What's going on here? What do I do?" And uh, I didn't really get this opportunity for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, my exact response was, "You want to be in a movie?" Get out of here! <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. All right, cool. And, uh, yeah, no brainer, right? That's hilarious. And, uh, so I was like, I thought it would just be like a, uh, like, uh, like I'll, I'll be in the background holding a gun or something for five seconds. You know, so I was like, I thought I'd have like a small little cameo part, you know, I was like, yeah, no problem at all, you know? And mm-hmm. then, uh, when they got in contact with me, you know, and they're like, you know, this is, uh, they sent me the script and then I realized I was like the lead role. Oh my God. <laughs> Like the you know like the the hero of character like the main guy in the movie and I'm like oh that's hilarious they have no idea I'm not qualified for this at all <laughs> so I was like you know, like I'm like you understand I'm completely unqualified like I don't know how to act I've never acted before I've never been on a set for a, a Dunkin' Donuts commercial let alone an action movie you know what I mean like I'm like, I don't know what's going on and they're like oh you'll be fine you know you just you know so. I mean, I just went in and winged it, you know, in my just but it was so it was really fun to like just be in a completely new environment, even though a lot of it is the same. And uh, a lot of like being in WWE, you know, learn you know, production camera type stuff, you know, a lot of that is the same on uh on a movie sense. So, you know, it, there was some stuff I, I was able to figure out really quickly from having, you know, WWE experience, but it was like learning something new every day. I, I uh you know, I felt Zero pressure 
because I was like, well, if this sucks, I'll be like, well, I don't know if they'll ask me to be in a movie anymore. Jesus Christ. You know, <laughs> I tried and, to uh, tell y'all. I mean, if Cena can play a Marine, why not you, right? Yeah, that was my theory. I was like, okay, Miz can do it and Randy can do it. I can totally do it. But, you know, I was like, that was my whole, like, this is going to be all right. I think it did pretty good, though. You know, I don't Man, what a year Ambrose has had. Yeah. I mean, just headline two pay-per-views without the belt being anywhere near mm -hmm. those matches. He's got that movie coming up that he talks about. I mean, it's just And I know you mentioned I'm actually I'm excited to see it. I want to I want to see that movie because Dean Ambrose is in it. Yeah. That, that, this is like the first WWE movie that their studios is doing that I'm actually like, "Ooh, I have to see this because it's Dean Ambrose in it." I know you've watched Jingle all the way too. Come on, bro. <laughs> It is on uh, WWE. I mean, it's on USA. It was. Oh, it was because this is We're the so future. Bad. We're so bad at being retro. We suck <laughs> so bad at being retro. I've just been upset. Um, <laughs> I maybe liked it or didn't. Yeah, I don't know. When I watched it. I guess oh, you'll have to wait man. till next year to find out what we think. <laughs> exactly. But Ambrose, uh, wow. I mean, what I love about him is, you know, he was already, in my opinion, he was already a star. And it was just time for him to have a national platform. And man, is he. That's the thing. It's like they're, they say, what is it? Um, luck is when preparation meets something. What's that phrase? I don't something know. Something about preparation H. Yeah. And your butt. Right. <laughs> right? Oh, okay. Yeah. It's something to do with that, I'm pretty sure. Okay. That, yeah. That, yeah. Maybe that's a different saying. It's a different saying. <laughs> but Ambrose is a perfect example of a guy who was ready and was finally given the opportunity, and he's taken the ball and completely ran with it. He's not just a guy who was recruited out of college and has two years exp no that dude no, he has, wants to do this yeah he's done everything possible and man has he proven himself I, I think preparation H still holds up in that example then yeah Science! <laughs> moving on we're going to Wales back over the pond our friend Stewie P also been down with us for quite a long time and uh Met him at WrestleMania. We did meet him at WrestleMania. He's on our uh, nerd. We did a video for Nerdist. Uh, you can find it on Nerdist YouTube page. With him and his pops. Yeah, him and his dad. Somewhere on the interwebs. Yeah, yeah. it's up there. It's it's episode something something. <laughs> just, 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 just go find it. And listen to it. Uh, Stewie P. Everyone. And I'm afraid I've got some good news. Hey guys, it's Stewie P. From Wales, aka God's Country. Unbelievable to see how far the show has come in 2014. My favourite interview slash interviews have been with A-Double. Fantastic having TNA alumni on rather than just WWE talent. Also, Dale's interview with CM Punk. It was great to hear pertinent non-wrestling related questions because he's been getting wrestling related stuff fired at him since he's left WWE. So, yeah, that was refreshing. That was, that was nice. As I've said previously, this show is by you guys who are big fans for us fans. Keep up the good work in 2015, and I'll see you in San Jose, Santa Clara for Mania Week. Oh, there it is. There it is. Uh, uh, it's getting uh, sultry. In here. <laughs> now, yeah. uh, as this song really kicks in. Oh, feel it. oh, oh man, this is Jesus. Right. Wow. Some baby making music yeah, right here. This ain't the Aries music that we're used to. No. But there's a story behind it. Oh, man. Oh, man. What? Johnny got some white boy dance wild. moves over here. Man, give me my corduroy uh, pants. Uh, People uh, at home don't know it's also extremely hot in here. Yeah. It's getting hotter. Yeah. Dude, let's all take our shirts off and kiss. <laughs> <laughs> There's just four dudes and Monica in here right now. Monica doesn't like it. And we're playing Curtis <laughs> Mayfield. <laughs> I, I can't imagine she does. Get down. All, right, so all, I, all I'm explain. picturing when that song came on was like, remember that scene in uh, Zoolander where it's like the crazy orgy thing and like the, the camera's banning around? It, yeah. <laughs> So explain, uh, this is the first thing I was going to ask, because you showed me this picture last night, and I was like, no, that's not real. You're like, oh, it's real. <laughs> it's damn real. I'm going to give you a wrestling intro, mm -hmm. and then you explain everything after that. Okay. <clears throat> From Intercourse, Pennsylvania, weighing in at a combined 420 pounds, the Piston, Ted Dixon, and Dan Casual section, the Dixon section, Connection! There it is. The that was a Dixon, really bad darn, darn part of it. Dixon, Sexon, Connection. Please explain. Dixon, Sexon. Uh, just, just basically my favorite tag team of all time, uh, mm -hmm. a very little-known tag team out of the... Uh, made their made their name in the Midwest in the uh, mid two thousands. Okay, uh, you know some people tried to claim that I was actually Dan Casual Sexton, <laughs> uh, but but I will deny that even to this day. Really, uh, just like I was an Austin star. But you had a uh, picture of him on your phone. <laughs> oh, I got a lot of pictures of these guys. Got it. Okay. Uh, no, but uh, in all seriousness, just uh, a fun like alter ego that me and a buddy of mine did. He he wrestled as Brody Hoofer, and. Um, <laughs> 
we were sitting around one night uh, in my apartment, and we were just kind of bullshitting and having a couple cocktails. And he told me when he would go out to the bars with his buddy, he would use the name Ted Dixon. Yeah. The Piston, Ted Dixon. Yep. And uh, I said, man, I said, what, you know, when I was trying to figure out a, a good wrestling name, like one of my alter egos or, you know, characters I came up with was Dan Casual Sexton. I love it. So I said, wait a minute, Dixon Sex, the Dixon Sexton connection. And I said, but to hide our identities, we got to wear fake mustaches. There you go. And because uh, I hadn't had a mustache at that point. So we went and got some spirit gum and some fake mustaches and a couple of leisure suits. And uh, it was it was kind of a it was it was almost like Tony Clifton meets the wild and crazy guys. Wow. You know, so, and uh, I think you need to bring this back. Yeah, man. We, you know, at the time we thought we could have single-handedly, uh, you know, saved Raw. Uh, that was like pre-attitude era, you know, or, or okay. maybe it was post-attitude era. I don't know. Now, did the me- did the mustache mustaches did they ever stay on during a match? You know, there. Once we found the right uh, spirit gum, but there was, uh, there was a, okay. a couple instances where I'm in the corner with spirit gum, like trying to reapply my mustache while I'm waiting for awesome. the hot tag. You know. And uh, cause, you know, that totally blew our identity, you know. Yeah. So it was really important we kept those on. Were you guys like a fun-loving party boy kind no, of? No, we were. Team? No, like we were the guys who came out with silly string and shot it between our legs at the crowd. Uh, that sounds pretty fun-loving uh, to me. Yeah. One time we found, uh, of course, we were, you know, this, these are small independent shows. We were changing in, like, the janitor's closet for one of these shows, and we found this dance wax. Oh, shit. We came out and sprinkled that on our feet and the ref's feet, and magically everyone started dancing. Uh, <laughs> we found some glass cleaner and, and uh, blacked out the, the G and the L, and we went around spraying people with ass cleaner. Uh, so that, it, we were pretty and weird. where was this again? Minnesota area. God, yeah, I love it. And actually, our, f- our first match was against ODB and her partner. Uh, <laughs> you got to be kidding. No, a, a very a very new to the business ODB and, oh, and her partner boy. Cujo, and Cujo is about three hundred and fifty pounds of of guntacular. Um, oh yeah, and oh. so you know ODB had the dirty dozen where she would uh, you know ram her opponent's head into the into her crotch twelve times. Yeah. but you can't do that to Dixon Sexton because that's where they live, baby. I mean, they live yeah. there. It's not going <laughs> to affect them. So after about six or seven, the the, the piston you know kind of cut her off and, and tagged in Danny because he wanted some. Okay, and uh, and and uh, casual Dan got in there and started putting his own head in between ODB's legs, turned around <laughs> and gave it the nod of approval. While that had happened, uh, Cujo and ODB switched spots, and uh, when Casual Dan went back for, to finish the twelve, he got a he got a, a, a six inch surprise in his left eye. So uh, <laughs> that was our first match, and of course, USA! yes, USA! yes, and uh, and of course, their finishing uh, maneuver was the large package, which was a, a, a double team small package. So, <laughs> oh wow! God. Yeah, hey, have you ever gone public with this before? Besides Minnesota in the late nineties, I mean, you know, there's a, a small percentage of people who, who would even you know know. So uh, now, now we're sharing it with the rest of the world, right? I love it, Lord. And that, my friends, is an example of <clears throat> how much unexpected fun you could have when you have someone in studio. I didn't know anything about that old character Austin Aries had when he was like two years into wrestling. Uh-huh. And I love it. He, he texted me a picture earlier that day of the tag team, and I was like, "We have to talk about this." He's like, "All right." He's giving Chuck like nutritional. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Dig it! How's it going? Austin Aries is a very knowledgeable man yeah, on the is. subject. I got he's a Vitamix because of him. He's <laughs> trying to help me avoid colon cancer one day, people. Oh, well. I'm, I'm, I'm having a little trouble giving up all the meat, but, you know. I thought that sentence was going somewhere well, else completely. Yeah. I know what he's saying, though. <laughs> a, a lot of red meat can lead to yes. colon issues as a man. So, yes. I mean, you know, nobody wants that. Eat yeah. that chicken, son. That's well, right. see, that's, that's what Austin would tell me exactly not to do. He says, well, don't he, eat that chicken, man. I mean, he's vegan. Well, you said red meat. Well, Will you yeah, stop? But... <laughs> <laughs> he is vegan. He's very good at it. All right, moving on. Um, once again, another SummerSlam story. Uh, we had to sit down with Daniel Bryan, and um, <clears throat> the whole interview was fun. Yeah, I mean, it was it was crazy. I ran into him at uh, Comic-Con, and I interviewed him and Hogan back-to-back yeah. back in this very small, smaller than this room we're in now, which is, is pretty small. Um, and then we saw him again just, what, three weeks later, four weeks later, something like that. And mm-hmm. he's just one of the nicest dudes on you. the block. Yeah, He remembered you, which is oh, cool. Yeah. He had some questions about show enough. He didn't know what show enough meant. <laughs> uh, Hulk we, Hogan got it. Brian, Daniel Bryan didn't just, get it. He's just a funny guy, too. I remember earlier this year when, uh, after WrestleMania, uh, Charmel and Booker were there at their, like, little party afterwards. And Charmel really wanted to meet Daniel Bryan. Oh, yeah? And his... And his reaction to it, like when Booker called him over, it was like deer caught in the headlights look as soon as Booker hollered at him to come over. He came over, very friendly guy, very funny. He just 
his reaction to it. Like he, he his facial expressions are priceless. <laughs> uh, not not a, not a big texting fan and not a big phone fan in general. And actually, like so, uh, uh, last night Bree had said to me something to the effect of this. She said. I need your attention right now. And I said, you've had my attention all day, but your attention's been on your phone. <laughs> which is, which is like, but it's... Shot fired. <laughs> yeah, that, that did not win me any points. But it was like, uh, but it's true because people are walking around just looking at their phone. It's, it's and like, alarming. This all, like, people feel like they have access to you 24 hours a day. And, and I don't want anybody to have access to me 24 no. hours a day, you know? Well, it's and so amazing like, how, and we're all similar in age, I think. It's, it's amazing how... It's hard for me to even remember the mid '90s when, when you left your house, if someone wanted to get a hold of you, too late. Yes. Yeah. 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 There might be a special code for your pager, but that was about it. <laughs> <laughs> pager. I, I never. Cool, yeah. Man. I didn't even know anybody who had a pager. Like, you know, I had one for work. Oh, really? <laughs> I had a couple guys who thought they were cool, and they were like, "Hey, yo, page me." Uh, page oh, me. <laughs> And then what happened with pagers is that when they paid you, did you have to go to like a, you to go to a, a pay phone, phone and yeah. then call somebody? Do you, know, do you know what I miss is remembering people's numbers. I used to yeah. remember everybody's numbers. Everyone's and now, number. now like I have a hard time remembering my wife's number. <laughs> And, like, it's like, how is that possible? Don't get that caught I, in an emergency. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. Like, oh, no, if my cell phone goes down, like, how That's do I get it. a hold of her? Like, I have <laughs> friends that ha- haven't even remembered their own cell phone number. Right, yeah. Because oh, yeah. they're so used to just, like, putting it in their own. It's just, you yeah, know. Like, can you Google Brie Bella? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Google Brie Bella's phone number and, like, see what comes Hopefully up. Hopefully nothing yeah. comes yeah. up. I don't know. That's scary. And I miss the feeling, and this didn't happen often for me. I don't know about for you, Daniel, but. I miss the feeling of, of when you get a girl's number, you have to write it down uh-huh. and then fold it in a piece of paper, and you go home feeling like the greatest guy alive because you got a girl's number. <laughs> do, you, do you know what that feels like? Success. Yeah. <laughs> more so, more so than like any like you know job promotion or anything uh-huh. like that. You know, like that is that like that is the definition of success. Yeah, especially if it's sloppily written on like a cocktail napkin <laughs> yeah. or something weird. Like, you know? don't like, smudge it. <laughs> right, yeah. Then ten minutes later, you're doing that scene from Swingers where Favreau makes the nine voicemails and ruins everything. Uh-huh. <laughs> I hope we get him back soon. Absolutely. Uh, you know, his health comes number one, and I imagine he will come back when he's fully healthy. But uh, what a great interview. Go back and listen to the whole thing. You will dig it. Speaking of great stories, um, our very first episode, we had Thea Trinidad, who's our BFF, in studio with us. And just the the story she told about what got her into wrestling oh, and man. what really motivated her to become a pro wrestler is not only inspiring, but it's it's going to touch the, uh, the little heartstrings. And so... Um, I don't know what else there is to say about her. We love her. I mean, she's she's amazing, and and the story is is just as amazing as she is. So. Yeah, we love her to death. Uh, she's an incredible person, really grounded, and so damn talented. She needs to be on a national pedestal at some point. Oh yeah, we're campaigning for it. Let's make it happen. That's right. Just so, don't make me work out with her again. That was rough. Ah, that was great. I was <laughs> loving watching her torture you. It was so fun. <laughs> oh, look, Dale's on a Swiss ball. That's awesome. <laughs> Kabuki! All right, guys. Enjoy uh, enjoy this story from Thea Trinidad way back from our first episode. Yeah. Your, your style is, <laughs> is, is pretty super athletically Rey Mysterio-y, which Thank is pretty you. sweet. I tried to very much. When I was younger, um, I would watch him, and I would try his moves in my pool, on the bed, or on my <laughs> On a bed. trampoline. Yes. Oh, I did. I did. And when I finally was able to do the 619 in a ring, I was so proud. Oh, so, yeah. Yes. I bet. That's it was crazy. Dope. But, you know, my favorite match probably with, you know, Ray was probably watching him and Eddie at Halloween Havoc in 97. What a match. And, yeah. yeah. So that was definitely one of my favorites. And, you know, when I first started wrestling, I started trying a lot of the different things. Hard as hell, but... Um, and how young when you started? I was 17 when I started. Yeah. Damn, that's so young. Yeah, they didn't yeah. ask me my age. So. <laughs> so you didn't tell them. No, I didn't. <laughs> Does the check clear? Come on in. Yeah, exactly. So um, I started training around 17. But, I mean, before that, my dad would teach me moves because he was an amateur wrestler in high school. And uh, that's how I learned how to put on a proper headlock. My okay. uncle was a pro wrestler in Puerto Rico. And he's wrestled like Bruno San Martino. The wow. funny thing is, is Bruno was the one who kind of, I don't want to say ended my uncle's career, but kind of. That was like the, the last straw because he's been wrestling for a while at that point. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, so uh, how old was your uncle? Like how long of a career did he have? Uh, I don't even know. He's my grandmother's brother. So he's my great uncle. Oh, so that's, yeah. Okay. So that's a long time ago. Yeah. And um, 
Bruno broke his nose during a cage match, and that was pretty much. He's like, "All right, guys, I'm done. I think it's time for my sons or whoever else in the family wants to take over." No one else down the line. <laughs> they did were all it. like, mm, "They're like, no, yeah. we don't want a broken nose, except for me." <laughs> That's a, so where was that so match? Awesome. It wasn't in Puerto Rico, was it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But Bruno wrestled tells everywhere. It, so. He did wrestle everywhere. But I mean, when my uncle tells the story, he's always like, "Man, you know my nose." Uh, so. Yeah. He gets a little touchy talking about it, but and tell us about your dad because I know you said he was an amateur wrestler. He taught you everything, but yes. he, you know, unfortunately, uh, go ahead. He uh, well, his big dream was that he wanted to be a WWE superstar. That was mm-hmm. always something that he wanted, and you know, being that he had three jobs at one point, a family, his wife, like there was no way for him to. You know, looking back now, at the time I put in to train, there was no way he would have time for that. Right. So when I was younger, I was like, no, I'll be the wrestler of the family, and you know. And he was always very supportive of it. Right. He'd always say, yeah, you know, that'd be really cool. He always said, that'd be awesome. You can be like the next Lita, or mm-hmm. Lita Rey Mysterio. And I always thought that was so cool. My mom's like, don't you dare tell her that because she's going to do it. <laughs> the mom's always got to be the warrior. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> she, she tried, though. She was like, ballet, pink, tutus, huh? huh you yeah. like that, huh? I was like, no. Girl mm-hmm. stuff? No? It's bad no. for your feet anyways. Yeah. Actually, yeah. ballet is arguably <laughs> going to mess you up, too. So, I mean, what yeah. the hell? So, um, it's not going to kill you in the end one way. <laughs> um, so, uh, on September 11, 2001, my dad had passed away. He worked for um, Kenner Fitzgerald in the World Trade Center. Mm. And after that, I mean, it was kind of just, for me, trying to figure out how I can cope with this. Like, you know, people always say, like, I don't know how you got through it. How you, you know, were able to be okay? I mean, I was kind of forced 11. to. I was 11. No, I 12? was 10 turning 11. Okay. And um, at that point, I was just like, I, I got to figure something out. And what is it that really brought my dad and I together? And it was wrestling. And I have, you know, wrestling to thank for that to pull me out of that depression that I was in for so long. And um, I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and conquer this dream for me and for my dad and see what just comes out of it. And I pushed so hard, and Tommy Dreamer was the person to see that in me. And I honestly feel like Tommy was the one that my dad sent to me, saying, like, if I couldn't be here for you, this is the person who's going to be. Wrestling mm-hmm. dad. Yeah, he's my wrestling dad. <laughs> it's amazing, Tommy's too, because everyone yeah. – I, I, I've never met Tommy personally, but everyone I've ever <laughs> talked to that knows him, it's just the most glowing – Everyone loves him. Yeah. yeah, he has so much respect in the wrestling business, and I think yeah. it's because he's one of the few that actually tell you the truth. <laughs> right. Sure, yeah, you know, it's nice too. I, lo- I lost my father in high school, and it's interesting. The things that kind of get you through that yeah. is definitely finding these things that remind you of them, but also in a way makes you become like them in yeah. a way. Like it's 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 interesting that you have a similar thing that just brings it all together, and makes you feel at at peace when yes. when you have these things that really yeah vitalize you absolutely and, and honestly i mean people always say like you're so comfortable talking about it it got me a while it took a while to get here but i've kind of realized that i need to be the one to continue sharing his memory and just mm-hmm. showing people like this is who he was and if he can shine through me and you can be inspired by that that's a beautiful thing so and clearly mm-hmm. he did i mean you know unfortunately he left when you were 10 11 years old but mm-hmm. just looking at you now at how you know me and dale talked about how it just incredibly just positive and (laughs) level-headed and like just wise beyond your years you are so obviously your dad did a lot of really good things thank you which is great what what do you think he would say if he could see this now ha i don't know (laughs) (laughs) he would probably say you're crazy (laughs) and um i mean i hope i hope that he'd be proud of it um i haven't gotten to where i want to be i mean i'm only 23 years old i just turned 23 but um I still have a long way to go. So Absolutely. I, um, I have a lot of things that I, I still want to accomplish in the wrestling business. And hopefully I can get to the point where I'm saying, okay, well, all right, we, we did everything that I wanted to. But, you know, that just takes time and yep. hard work. Absolutely it does. I think one thing your dad may have said if he saw you in TNA was like, baby, you're not Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, Vince Russo. <laughs> oh, Lord. But, well, yeah. that's, that's such a great, I mean, honestly, that's such an, it's an amazing uplifting story. And you know your dad's watching, I mean, and he's enjoying probably, you know, every second of it. Thank you. I hope really so. Cool. And, you know, what's crazy is I've, I told this story to Ray when I first met him. I met him back in um, April of last year. And when I told him, I mean, the look on his face was just... Like he was in awe, mm-hmm. just in, in 
complete shock. And I told him, I was like, you know, and you really inspired me to do this. So I really appreciate just you and who you are. As he got a- you through those six years after, before you were allowed to wrestle, really, yeah. probably just watching all the shows and everything. Absolutely. Him and Lita. And I met um, Matt and Jeff Hardy when I was 15 years old. All right. <laughs> and they were also part of the, uh, the mentoring process and trying to get me where they thought I needed to be. And, uh, you know, they've always, you know, Jeff Hardy actually wrote a song called September Day, and it was about September 11th. And... It's weird because I heard a lot of songs around that time, and I was like, you know, some of them are. What a story, Thea Trinidad. Now, now I have a favorite moment on our show this year too, but you know what? I'm gonna let our man. Oh man, man, you mean Brad Gilmore, the man with the golden hair, (laughs) the debonair Brad Gilmore. I'm gonna let him tell what our favorite because we share the same favorite clip. Yeah, I think a lot of people share this. I think this might have been one of the best moments of the show this year. Look, I played this clip for a a comedian friend of mine the other night who hasn't really watched wrestling in years, but Mm -hmm. he 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 was a WCW guy. And so I said, oh, were you now? Well, you're going to love this. And I played this section of the interview for him. He was cracking up. He's like, this is fat. This makes me want to listen to your show every week. I was like, well, you should. I mean, I mean, it's it's arguably I mean, there were a lot of great moments this year. Yes. But I can't remember all of us laughing in here oh my. as much as we did during this interview. Was that your OMG moment? I think for our show it is. <laughs> uh, just so you know, this clip might be slightly rated R. Not Brad Gilmore's, but the one following it. So, Brad Gilmore, take it away. Hey, guys, this is Brad Gilmore of Reality of Wrestling and host of the Brad Gilmore Show. I want to send a shout out to Chuck, Dale, and Johnny. Congrats on one year, guys. I'm very proud to be a compadre. Y'all shall continue to be the Steamboat Savage of wrestling podcasts. And I just had to say my favorite moment of the show so far has definitely been the very first interview with the one and only, the contemptible consultant, Stevie Ray. You know what I'm saying? Once it got let out the bag, it was too big to deny and it kind of like uh, really made people start watching tag team wrestling again. And the reason I noticed, I didn't think about it for a long time until people start coming to me and telling me this. And I was like, wow, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm really living a bubble because I'm like just being Stevie Ray going out, you know, talking and stuff and doing our thing. But then when you get that fan feedback from people that don't even watch wrestling, say, man, I, I just watch because of you guys. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. That's really how it was. I mean, speaking from a fan's perspective, that's really how it was. Because like you said, there weren't a lot of tag teams. You know, and even nowadays, you don't see a lot of tag teams where, like, oh, people would be wearing their T-shirts. But it's like for you guys, you know, you you see Road Warriors T-shirts everywhere, and you would see people wearing Harlem Heat stuff. And, and you guys had – such a massive impact, and you couldn't have been any different from the Road Warriors, but you guys were right at that same level. You were just way different, but just as, as impactful for the fans. Right. The thing about the Road Warriors, um, uh, it's funny you bring that up, because we used to get asked that question all the time. Me and my brother going through the airport, or we sitting in a restaurant, or we, whatever, you know, whether he was doing his thing, I was doing my thing. The question we would get all the time was, hey, man, how would you guys think y'all would would miss the road wars? And then we would always go, man, the road warriors are yesterday, and Harlem Heat is today. If they got in the ring with us, we'd make them look like they was going backwards. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. You know, this is what we would always say, that we... And we always go, we would eat them like collard greens. Hey, you, you know, you got a kayfabe at the airport. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, we're just putting ourselves over, blah, blah, blah. And then when we got a chance to do it, when when uh, Mike and uh, um, what's his partner? Uh, uh, Hawk and Animal, rather. Right. Uh, when they got back together and came into WCW, that's what everybody thought was going to happen. Okay, we had did the Steiner Brothers. We had did the Nasty Boys. We had did Stars and Stripes. We had did uh, uh, whoever, you know, Ice Train and Scott Norton. Right. We did the Blue Bloods. We had went through every, I mean, they, they, I remember even on interviews, me and my brother would say, you know, how, did, how, uh, with, I can't remember how, how it went, but certain interviews we would go, now I know how the Pittsburgh Steelers feel of the 70s. Mm. 
Now I know how the, the Oakland A's felt. Because when you got to dig tag teams up from the grave to put them against us, like the Rock and Roll Express, you know? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you know? We say, I remember saying that on the interview. You know, we got to dig people up from the grave. You know what I'm saying? To stop us. It took the NWO. You know? <laughs> and, and so then the, the Road Warriors came in, and they didn't want those guys to work with us. But they did, and we did. This was like when you get the 49ers from the 80s and the Pittsburgh Steelers from the 70s. Now, you don't think people have ask that question at any time? What would happen if Terry Bradshaw and his gang went against Joe Montana and his gang? Yep. You know what I'm oh, saying? Wow, that would be amazing to that see. That goes on in all sports. And when you got it in the palm of your hand, you drop the ball. And I'll never ever understand that but then again I understand it wholeheartedly because that was WCW <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the cronyism you know what I'm saying and the, that went on within that company and I'll never ever that's one thing I'll never ever forgive them for even though I'm not I'm kind of passionate about it because we wanted that we wanted to that to be an angle something we could push I mean we wrestled the Thailand brothers a thousand times, nasty ball a thousand times, all these other people a thousand times. Then when you get these guys here, we worked them one time. Once. Do you think they were trying to like protect the Road Warriors legacy maybe by by not having I think I would think it's just the inadequate, you know, upper tier people that don't know what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> 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 it's just it's just it's just like I say, it uh just Blatant stupidity. It wasn't the fact they're trying to protect them. It was the fact they didn't want us to go to uh, the rich extreme level. Yeah, that would have brought in some money, you know, man. I'll tell you that. So much. I mean, I mean, in the end, of, at the end of the day, if you look at boxing, we're the house fighters. You know what I'm saying? We're the house fighter. It's always a house fighter. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's the guy. That all the money is right now. Now you got a zillion dollars invested in us because you done pushed us. We've made money for the company. We've made ratings for the company. We got a whole audience that's watching us now that wasn't watching wrestling before because we are minorities and we all we we ain't gotta go down that fucking road, okay? Right. So we're doing our jobs and you seem like you should put us in a position, but you know, that was the uh, Nick and Nip and Tuck, Eric Bischoff bullshit, stupidity ass Robin, Bunny and Clyde bullshit that went on in WCW. <laughs> I don't think uh, that could have been said any more perfectly, actually. Hey, fuck them motherfuckers, man. You <laughs> off, man. Oh, apparently it could. Yes, it could. Uh, it could be said better, and he did. <laughs> man, drop the mic, walk away. Stevie Ray, y'all. Man, I could listen to that clip over and over, I really. Mean, he. It, Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth yeah. is golden. Like, if you follow him on Twitter, he just calls people out every week. He doesn't care. Nope. He doesn't care who he pisses off. Nope. He says what he thinks. Like, the fact that this guy doesn't have his own talk show or something on a national scene somewhere yet blows my mind. They're probably working on it, really. How is how is that not on the best of WCW DVD? <laughs> <laughs> him going, F those mother F's. <laughs> Maybe on, like, the extra footage or something. Oh, so good. Uh, well, she's speaking of good. Let's move on to the best in the world, Dale. Oh, man. I mean, this this the fact that this even happened kind of blows my mind, and it was just a I, right place, right time, preparation H kind of scenario. Hell yeah! Where, where uh, if I hadn't have been walking in to a place that, that the Nerdist guys were walking out, like, it just, everything just fell so harmonious that particular day, and then... Uh, I didn't know it was that... The random, the timing of it. it was... Yeah, yeah. I mean, Seth, who who's uh, with Nerdist, he was coming out, and he's like, hey, we have CM Punk here. He's doing some some stuff for video. Was he all, like, casual? Like, oh, yeah, you know this guy Punk? Have we got him. Have you heard of Punk? Yeah. I don't know if you're into wrestling Wait, with that, that wrestling guy? podcast. I mean, cash. <laughs> isn't, isn't that that, that UFC fighter or something? Who is <laughs> that guy? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. That's the one. You know this disgruntled guy? We got him. But I ran up there, so it was like at the top of Petco. I ran up there to talk to him, and, and luckily Chobot was up there, who, who I'm friends with. We love so, Chobot. Uh, who's also been on the show. And, uh, yeah, so I go up there, and I'm like, hey, uh, Seth said to come up here, talk to you. And he was like, oh, well, wrestling compadres, hmm, I don't really want to talk about wrestling. 
And you I were was like, like, good, uh, fine. Okay, sure. I have other things, I'm sure. Um, anyway, so it just turned into a, a 30 minute sit down interview where we just shot the shit about everything but wrestling. Dude, it was so, you did such an amazing job. Luckily, you and you and Punk ha- have a lot in common. Yeah, I mean, it, it really worked out. I, I was very surprised because it could have gone. Real bad, real quick. I feel, but yeah, but you're not a disgruntled asshole. Well, how did you come? <laughs> oh, with him? oh, boy, <laughs> damn it, Chuck. <laughs> this is the best of. Yeah, Chuck. it's the best of. And this interview was the best of. I. It was, it was definitely one of the interview. highlights of my year for sure. So let's great say, interview. So here's a nice little chunk of Dale with CM Punk. And if you if you want to hear the whole thing, just go back to the episode uh, aptly titled CM Punk. Here we go. Uh, but you know, I, I, I would love to do. Uh, any number of things. I will play Casey Jones in a prequel of Walking Dead. <laughs> Fuck it. Wow, that might be a harder sell, but, you know, <laughs> we'll see what we can do. <laughs> um, so have you gotten a chance to hit the floor at all over there at Comic-Con? I was on the floor Wednesday night. Um, and I've been on the floor every day, but we've okay. been filming stuff. Oh, okay. So I've been busy. So I really haven't been able to, to look around. And actually, my big, gigantic plan yesterday after we filmed the wrap-up show at Petco Park, mm-hmm. was to walk the floor. So I was all excited. Wrapped it. Actually, that's one of the reasons I ditched out on you yesterday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, just, <laughs> I was starving, so I was like, ah! And I, I left Petco Park. I ran. I ate at Nobu really quick, and then I walked across the street, and I was stoked to, to walk the floor. And then I was like, I need a coffee. This first coffee of the day. It took me 45 fucking minutes to get this coffee. Lord, <laughs> don't I know. Starbucks. <laughs> I mean, let's let's get it in gear. You know what I mean. <laughs> what kind of membership card do you have? Um, to have? I but but I, I will say this: it was a very entertaining forty-five minutes. Oh yeah. Just, I mean, just standing in just line, people watching. Oh my god. <laughs> and then the the Bane ordered a, a non a non fat latte, and I I tweeted it. I, I couldn't. <laughs> You know, awesome. non fat latte for Bane. <laughs> and, like, you know, this guy comes out of the crowd with the Bane mask on and he grabs it. And I was just all this shit that was going Thank through girl. my head. It was funny. Um, awesome. But yeah, so I, I finally got my coffee. Um, and uh, told him my name was Jack Burton. So I, I, felt, I felt like a real badass walking around. There was a lot of characters at Starbucks that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walking around with my. I, I, so I hit the floor and I text some buds from Marvel and I was like, ah, I'm going to come say hi. I'm walking the floor. I thought I had all the time in the world, mm-hmm. um, and then they told me that the floor closed at seven. Oh, to which I was like, "What?" <laughs> I thought because I was on the floor till like nine Wednesday night. I oh, well. I thought it was Good like a nine o'clock. So I don't understand, and I still don't understand why we're closing the floor at seven. Is that so people can have like weird furry parties? I, oh, I'm sure there's masquerade balls. Yeah, and, I mean, well, I wanted to walk the fucking on their feet floor a lot. I, I mean, there's know. there's there's some people that I, I want to have a cup of coffee with and, and say hi, but maybe maybe I'll get there today. I, I know, know Sunday is usually the quietest day. I don't know if you're here all the way through the weekend, but that's I've had the best luck getting more individual time on like Sunday morning. Interesting. All right. Cool. Uh, do you have so do you collect any toys or I have a toy collecting problem. People tell me it's a problem. I, I used to I, I, I used to what I do I used to violently collect toys. <laughs> I, violently. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean I used to be that guy. I used to work at Target. Uh, I used uh-huh. to be specifically getting that discount. I well you know, that and all the toys would come in and I would bust those oh, boxes open you and you know pickings. what I mean? Oh uh-huh. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. I'm on to you. Yeah. So uh, I still have an extensive uh, collection of boxes. Boxes that are just collecting dust in my house, but uh, lately I'm, I'm I'm big into the Funko stuff just because it's cute and it's fun, and I, it's, and it's not pieces. it's not messy. I can just yeah. rip the box open, throw it out. I, little, you, little you know what space. I mean? Um, actually, you know what I was impressed with? Uh, I, I was uh, me and my wife were shopping uh, not too long ago, and I saw the new Transformers figures. For and it, Funko or or no no for the movie? No, like the for the movie. Okay. Yeah. And it spoke to me, and there was a Grimlock, and I was like, ah, oh, oh, Grimlock. Okay. So I bought it, and even with the instructions, I could not fucking transform <laughs> this thing to save my life. You lost the touch. So I, I just put it on the mantle, and it's this half-assed transformed Grimlock. <laughs> he's got a dino head with man legs. And he's like palsy Grimlock. He has like a fist, <laughs> and like his jaw is the wrong way, and it's like shit's backwards. And I, I literally, I gave up. And then what really you have made a five-year-old over? I have, I have all these. Uh, I, I, I know. I, need, I, I was texting my friends who have children. I was like, "Can you please have him come over and just put this thing together?" Um, I have these moments where I'm just like, "Oh, I'm old," and I know I'm not old. I'm 35, right. but I've, 
you know, uh, to, to, I guess, uh, the industry, I'm old. They're not, nobody, nobody is out there marketing shit to me. No, you cussed that 34 bracket. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm yesterday's news. I'm, I'm on the curb. I'm a pile of garbage, but w- I couldn't, I couldn't transform the Grimlock, but I put together my concept to rowing machine in my gym without even looking at the directions <laughs> And it made I literally I, and then I just slumped on the floor Indian style and I just started to fake sob. And my wife's like, "What's wrong?" And I was like, "I can't put together Grimlock." But I I didn't even look at the fucking directions of this thing. And I, I I'm a grown man. Yeah, it, it was depressing. <laughs> it sucked. Um, Funko Pop. I one of my favorite figures that I have of theirs is I don't know if you've seen it. You've probably seen it, but they have a ode to Randy Savage pink trunks cm oh, punk me. version yeah. yeah 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 it's awesome I, I i'll have to get you to sign it at some point but that's, uh, that's well, one of my gladly my keystones my wife my, my wife uh i i don't I, I, you walk in my house you wouldn't know what the hell i uh, i i am or what i did for well, a you got a gym and a that, grimlock so. so i'm already like yeah it. yeah yeah <laughs> but uh uh she she likes to get that stuff um i'm not mm. such a fan of it but uh, i'm a i'm a huge funko guy but like i i don't really uh, pay attention to like what's coming out and what's out there. Like I'll randomly see some and I'll be like, oh god, look at that, that's cool, and then I'll just buy it. They have one here right now that's exclusive to Comic Con. That's a bloody Herschel. He's got the stump and his head can come off. I need that. Okay, I need to go. Let's go on your list. Yeah, <laughs> I need to go there and just shake somebody from Funko down. Oh um, yeah. I'm a platinum I, uh, member there, so if you need help. You're a platinum Funko member? Yeah, I don't All even right, know well, what it means. Let's, <laughs> let's get out of here and go walk the floor. And just go crack some Funko skulls. Uh, there was the, they, they had the, the exclusive last year. Was it the Ned Stark? That, uh, yep. That, yeah. yeah that's, I got that one. That's amazing. I need that, too. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really pricey on eBay. People be flipping some toys here. Right. Well, I, see, I'm, I, I, I used to live in a bubble, so now I feel like I'm outside that bubble. Uh-huh. There's a lot of things that I missed. And what I did on my honeymoon is I watched 40 hours of Game of Thrones. I watched all four seasons. <laughs> That's a, a very odd ride to cram all in one. Well, session. I mean, we just, we, we got on the plane and we started on the plane and oh, like, it just, you know, like it just rolled on and on and on. And, you so know, you fully caught up. Yeah, yeah, we watched nice. we watched everything, but then wow. you know it was like, oh, there's Game of Thrones Funko stuff. Oh, we got to get those, you know what I mean? And you know, yeah, it's a it's a deep rabbit hole once you yeah, go down. There. I'm I'm in. I'm I'm in. Uh, so congrats on your marriage, by the way. Thank you. That's very really much. awesome. Do you, does you. it feel any different? I got married not too long ago myself. Does it feel any different to you? Or it, it oddly just... it oddly does. I never would have uh, guessed. I, I wouldn't have uh, thought it felt different, but yeah, it does. It does. I, I can't really. I don't know if I would be able to articulate what feels different. No, it's kind of like having a – there's just new dependable thing that you love. And I don't know. There's, some, there's a line that – I feel like I feel like there's this calm in my life that I've never, ever experienced. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty awesome. It's like a zen thing. Yeah. Well, that's great. Congrats. Thank you. Um, so I wrote an analogy that you're a Pepsi Cola in a world full of Cokes. Okay. <laughs> is that a good analogy or are you yeah, just a big I always Pepsi kind fan? of uh, <laughs> I always kind of describe myself as a square peg in a round hole world. So okay. yeah, that's the same, same thing, same thing. Absolutely. <laughs> so do you do you have uh, dedication to Pepsi specifically or I don't, just a good piece I don't, of art? I haven't had a carbonated beverage in 3 years. I don't even drink. <laughs> you know, people still assume, you well, know. Well, I mean I mean, that shit's, that shit's bad for you. That shit is bad for you. You know, there is, the, there is that elusive, that, uh, that Mexican Pepsi that's just made with the sugar. Oh, yeah. And one of these days, uh, if I have a cheat day, I'll probably order a pizza and get one of those if I can find it. But, if you uh, have a Mexican Coke, does your Pepsi tattoo itch or burn or anything? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Well, maybe we'll, maybe say, we'll yeah. find out. Let's get the Nerdist cameras and film it. It'll be a good segment. Dale Rutledge, the best in the world. I got a puppet. I'm just kidding. But anyways, that was awesome, right? Come on Oh, now. man, yeah. I think dream fulfilled for the year, for sure. Absolutely. Now, we only got a few more clips left, and we saved the final two appropriately for our two best friends on the show. Uh, number one, Nigel McGinnis. Uh, we were lucky enough to have him in studio so many times earlier this year. He got busy. He got a job. He's he's you know he's he's moved on from wrestling, but now he's got he's being an adult. He's being an adult, which I mean no one wants to, but we all got to do it sometimes. Yeah, he's got that LA fights thing going on. LAfights.com. Go to it. Just check it out. Donate because this project could be absolutely incredible for the world of pro wrestling. Um, so this is just a, a clip of him talking with us in studio from earlier in the year. Just gives you a vibe of how fun it is to be around Nigel. How, how what a great time we have with him. So. 
Nigel McGuinness, y'all. As difficult as it is to win that belt, to, you know, to hold it and to maintain that sort of legacy, even more difficult. Well, your, your reign was historic because I remember when you got hurt at one point, how long were you out while you held on to the title? That had to be a hard decision to allow you. I mean, it was tough. It was, you know, uh, I was already sort of banged up going into it when I won the belt. And it was actually, <coughs> excuse me, it was actually two weeks after I won the belt that I partially tore my bicep in England. Um, and yeah, it was crazy. I, I went to the hospital and the nurse came in and she looked at it and she goes, oh, you've torn your biceps. I'm like, you're kidding me. You've got to be kidding me you know and then i said well wait a second because I, I had my arm bent at the time and i said if, if i if i move my arm like that look it, it moves right oh you haven't you haven't torn it at all so she completely changed i love it what <laughs> here's the thing though here's a common yeah, okay. misconception about the bicep right. you can tear your bicep tendon and still not lose any function because you have enough muscles to make up for it that's why a lot of times you'll see old men that have like a ball up because like when you reach a certain age and they tear your butt, they're like, ah, I don't need surgery. And so it's a fact. You don't necessarily need to have it fixed when you right. tear your bicep. In fact, and funnily enough, actually, um, I, I talked to some of the guys that wrestled uh, in, in WWE at the time, um, and they said, don't worry about it. They said half the guys under contract <sighs> have torn biceps anyway. Oh, my yeah. gosh. And that, that cost me my career. Right. And then, of course, yeah. they, they were wrong on not worrying but, about it. I mean, it. you know, I guess that's, that's how it works. You never know, right? You never know. So, Well, well speaking of them, uh, mm. we had Seth Rollins on the show last week. Yeah, lovely and fella. he spoke, I, obviously, I'm sure you know about the article uh, recently on, online. Yeah, about, you know, yeah, yeah. But he spoke glowingly about you. I want, I want you to hear the interview, actually, at some point. But mm. um, he just said, he's like, Nigel really, he's like, you, you taught him how to be a man in the ring. He's like, I was this naive kid. He's like, Nigel could have protected his spot. He could have trashed me. He could have hit me even harder than he did. He could have destroyed me with that lariat. And, and just in general, psychologically, he could have destroyed me. But he said he was a total pro. And he said how much he says. He's like, I owe a lot to Nigel McGinnis. And a lot of guys do. And, uh, and he said, I believe the exact words were an unsung hero. Ah, oh, that's very nice. That, that really does mean a, a whole lot to me. Yeah. yeah. And so, he said our job is to remind you daily, so... Get yeah. ready for a lot of texts. Oh, you should remind Vince McMahon. <laughs> I know. That's what we're pushing for. <laughs> Nigel, if there's any way, uh, I'm nah, telling nah, you. No, nah, nah. nah, seriously, legitimately, I have other irons in the fire, which I think, uh, you know, touch wood um, will be bigger than anything I, I possibly could have done when I was there. So fingers Good. crossed the news will come out eventually. But um, that's it. You know, life goes in a different direction sometimes. And I don't think things happen for a reason. But I do believe that, you know, when opportunity arises, you know, uh, you have to take it. Uh, yeah. that, that, is a, that is the key to a successful life. You know? That's true. When the news does happen, you will tell us on this show. You better believe it. And that's Nigel McGinnis for you. Hopefully we'll hear a lot more from him in 2015. Go to LAFights.com. Chuck, it is now time for our final clip of the of the week, of the year. Who could it possibly be, Johnny? I can tell you who it is. Our friend James Kennedy, the co-creator of Ruffigans.com at JK. Hey, one, two, three, four. He says, you know what? I want to take it all the way back to episode one. And I think that's very appropriate because if it wasn't for Booker T, this show would not nearly be as what it, be what it is. Yeah, for sure. It wouldn't be as what it is. <laughs> there you I go. Now you said it right. I can't speak. Uh, yeah, I mean, Booker T has been such a gift, and I, I think that you know this has just been an amazing ride to have him alongside. And, and, and he's, he's been he, like a father figure to you. Oh, man, I've known Booker for years, you know, just years. Years and, and years. And I have to say that he has imparted a lot of wisdom on me. Mm -hmm. He's verbally chewed me out several times. I love that. And I've learned from it. Sure. Hopefully. Ah, but, yeah. but Booker <laughs> just has such charisma and a knowledge of this business that every time you get to talk to him, you learn something new. Yeah. So I don't think there's anyone better to close out the best of show. Than Booker T. And it was hard to choose. You know, I'm glad James mentioned the first episode because Booker's on, I mean, out of our 50-ish ep episodes, I mean, Booker's been on 45 probably. Yeah. So we figured, why not? We got a great interview with him from the very first episode. Here's just a little snippet from it. Mind you, they're all great yeah. interviews. <laughs> yeah, just nonstop. But this is us with Booker T all the way back to episode one. Dig it. Dig it! No, 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 seriously, because most wrestling um, promoters, you know, um, that I've 
seen throughout my time in this business, they always want to make themselves, you know, the biggest part of the show. They want to make themselves a champ and do all of that, you know, make themselves, you know, the special tracks and they sign all the autographs, whatnot, and get all the, the fans there. For myself, um, I've done it all. You know, reality of wrestling is for my young students, is for the young, you know, wrestlers around the Texas area to come and be a part of something special. And um, and I'm going to let, I'm going to give them the reins, man. I'm going to let them run. I'm going to let them score if they get a chance to and uh, move on to that next stage, um, which is the big time. That's what reality of wrestling is about. It's not about me. It's about my stars and these guys fulfilling their dreams. And I, that's amazing. And I know you mentioned, you know, wrestling promoters just now. I know you wear you wear Paul Bosch's ring. And for those who don't know the name, uh, you know, he's a legendary wrestler, announcer, and promoter who is really responsible for, for the rise of wrestling in Houston over 50 years in the business, was known as such an honorable man, which, as you know, is hard to come by in this business. I imagine wearing that ring has to be a constant reminder as to what you want reality wrestling to be. Yeah, I mean, definitely from a professionalism standpoint, you know, um, Paul Bosch, you know, he promoted wrestling here for many, many years. A lot of wrestlers worked in, you know, the Houston territory, and I've never heard one bad word ever said about Paul Bosch. He was definitely a class act. I got big, big shoes to fill, but Paul Bosch is like an angel on my shoulders, guiding me through this storm, and I really don't think I could have done it without him. Um, I'm using the blueprint Paul Bosch, you know, had back in the day. You know, his two biggest sponsors was uh, I.W. Marks Jewelers and uh, – you know, um, a furniture store out, out on the southwest side. I don't want to mention their name right now. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm doing the same thing. You know, I, I got uh, Lewis Diamonds. You know, um, you know, um, they're, they're like my biggest sponsor right now, as well as um, Hilton Furniture. You know, um, they're partnered with me as well to now take red. You guys are getting a scoop right now. Hilton Furniture has partnered with the um, Reality of Wrestling crew um, to take Reality of Wrestling to total the next level. We got our our Dixie Carter uh, right now, you know, and we've been looking for okay. something like this to come, <laughs> out there, to come along and, and help us uh, fuel reality of wrestling for a long time, and we finally got the man, Hilton, is going to come in, and uh, I, I put a tweet out today, I was going into a meeting that could change the face of reality of wrestling forever, and that meeting was uh, definitely a great meeting. Wow, so Hilton Furniture now getting involved, could we possibly see the first ever love seat match? <laughs> 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 that's, a possi- that's a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> that's a different kind of action, I think, actually. So, Booker, if we're not going to get you in the ring, who who down there it reminds you of you? Is there any anybody that that kind of stands out? You're like, they, oh, they got a little bit of Booker T in them. You know, not really. You know, I mean, um, I, when I train my wrestlers, you know, um, I, I train them to be on um, themselves. You know, um, I teach them the, the science. Um, I teach them. You know, the protocol, and they can pretty much take it and go wherever they want with it. Well, that's it, guys. That was 2014. 2K14 in the books. What a year. God, yeah, right? Man. Wow, and, and so many other great ones that just there wasn't enough time to put on here. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, I mean, go back and listen to the show, really. But <laughs> there's, there was so, cheap it was plug. Really, it was really hard to go through and pick out the favorites because everybody had some really awesome moments. And I mean, we could have been here all day doing this. Because... Well, that's why we left it up to our listeners. Yeah, because that way it's it's way easier on us. Hey, you tell us what you like, we'll find it. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, we've already got some good things brewing for next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna blow it out for sure. We'll be at WrestleMania again this year, so uh, we should plan some kind of get together for everybody road trip hope to see all you ruffigans and compadres there yeah and uh just you know straight from the heart we can't thank you guys enough for the positive feedback all the tweets the the facebook messages have been fantastic uh that page is growing and you know like i said guys we're not getting rich off this as a matter of fact we've lost money off this show but we do it because we love it (laughs) and getting the positive feedback from you guys and and the fact that you guys are invested in this that makes it all worthwhile uh, to put the work in every episode and to try to give you the best possible entertainment you can have for your eardrums. And so uh, thank you. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, keep all the messages coming because I love having new people to talk about wrestling with. Yeah, I love uh, – it's it's always exciting when you, you know, after a pay-per-view or a Raw, see like a ton of mentions in your tweets or your yep. Facebook notifications. It's like, oh, yeah, that's awesome. We get to talk to these guys for a bit. We've and had, girls. We've got some great girl wrestling oh, great fans, girls. too. We've had people hold up signs at Raw that have gotten on TV. <laughs> oh, yeah. How crazy is that? So awesome. And keep doing that, by the way, if you're going We love it. (laughs) And when we're lucky enough to travel, I mean, we we run into you sometimes. And so, you know, that's just, that's amazing, you know? Yeah. To make a connection with with an audience, we, we can't ask for anything more. 
It's true. You said it right. Yeah. So, well, hell, that's it, guys. <laughs> See you, 2014. Yeah, that's right. Chuck, last words? <laughs> last words? I don't even know. <laughs> Are we killing Are you, him after this podcast? What is this, like an Undertaker type of thing? You're going to make me rest in peace after this, Lock Johnny? the door. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to say, you know, thank you to all of you. You've made this an awesome, awesome year. That's right. Dale? Thanks to Nerdist for letting us do this. This was just a dream of mine to have this happen, and, and it took a lot of pitching and, and random things to make it happen. And it did. They really embraced it and let us run with it, so it's really nice. Chris Hardwick himself said, I never thought we would have a wrestling podcast on the network, but here we are a year later We're almost. doing it. And thank you to WWE, TNA, yes. Yes. Reality of Wrestling, yes. all, the, Honor, yeah. all the companies out there, all the people in the wrestling business that have supported us and helped make this awesome and that's what we do we support the business we want as many people to be working as possible we, we want everyone to succeed and and that's what the show is all about is uh is putting out a, the positivity you know what i mean Faux show it's a new day y'all all right well uh you know what what else is there to say uh have a great start to the new year we're gonna see you real soon with a brand new episode and uh hey ruffigans you were always home eating a ribeye yeah that's right can you dig it, dig it, sucker, sucker? Can you dig it, sucker? Now leaving Nerdist.com.